Hello and welcome to the opening bell brought to you by Boxing News. My name is Matt Christie. I'm John Zellin. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing on the May 7 super fight between Amir Khan and Saul Canelo Alvarez. Amir Khan is exciting to watch. Uh, when has Amir Khan ever been in, in a boring fight? This is one of those fights where Canelo has to think outside the box. It's going to be like a game of chess. Canelo's a very good fight. He's strong. It's not like I'm going to stand there with him and start throwing big punches. Come fight night, I'm going to be ready. We'll also be joined by Joshua Buatzi, who has qualified for the Olympics and will be representing Great Britain in the light heavyweight division. He'll look back on his own career and ahead to the big fight. So, John, <laughs> this was a real, real shock, wasn't it? I mean, normally when we've got fights of this magnitude, you kind of wait and you know that the negotiation is happening. With this, we had no idea. Yeah, it's very rare for talks to carry on in secret. And especially with Amir Khan, who before the Canelo fight was made, Amir had been calling out everyone, Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Kelbrook, Danny Garcia, whoever. He hadn't mentioned anything about Canelo Alvarez. And when the news actually got announced, I was, I was, I was taken aback. I was shocked by it. I remember it. We were trying to go to press fairly late on a Tuesday. Uh, and then it appears on Twitter, Oscar De La Hoya has announced that Khan is going to face Canelo Alvarez. There was disbelief and then there's a little bit of panic because we had to put the issue to yeah. bed within about half an hour, so we had to alter the front page and everything else. But it's a huge, huge opportunity, isn't it, for Amir Khan? You can tell it's a huge fight because of the huge level of interest. Part of that was su the surprise when it was made. Um, but it's probably going to be the biggest fight of the year. They're two of the biggest names in boxing and bringing them together in one unexpected fight. Something the world's going to be focusing on that on May 7. We must kind of mention Kel Brook in all this because we were kind of wondering why is Amir Khan not agreeing to the Kel Brook fight and that kind of thing. Do you feel that this has kind of answered some critics regarding Khan ducking Kel Brook, the fact that he's moving up effectively two weight divisions to take on Alvarez? Yeah, I mean, you can't for Amir Khan for bravery because this is he is up against it in terms of size and power. He is a big underdog when it comes to, to, to facing Saul Alvarez. So then, you know, in that sense, you can't really criticise him for not fighting Kel Brook, even though that would have been a big British fight. Yeah, it would. We mentioned about the fact that he's moving up in weight. Fact is, though, even though this is for the WBC middleweight title, there will be a catchweight. Alvarez will be at 155. Khan will be at 155. It's more super welterweight, like middleweight, isn't it, than, than middleweight? Because it's so close to that 154 limit. Yeah, because it's for a middleweight world title, you feel like he's jumping up two divisions. He is in name only, really, yeah. because Alvarez is, a, is essentially a big, light middleweight. But Khan's never fought at light middleweight before. And Alvarez is a very big, very strong light middle, so I still think it's a very dangerous fight. I just find the whole thing absolutely, absolutely fascinating in that how is Khan going to cope with the extra size? Not only the extra size of his opponent, but the extra size himself. We've already seen that he's bulking up. Now, one of his biggest assets is his speed. Is this likely to affect him? I think so. I mean, it doesn't sound too scientific to say when you get bigger, you get slower. But, you know, you are carrying that greater weight. You know, even if he's fast, if he can't trouble Canelo and he can't force Alvarez to back off, he's going to be in trouble himself. Whereas Amir might not have had the sort of single punch concussive power at welterweight, but he threw so many punches so quickly and they were all sort of stern, sharp shots. That gave his opponents there real problems. If he's not troubling Canelo, if Canelo's not afraid to close in on him, it's very dangerous for Amir Khan. You mentioned there if, if Khan isn't troubling Canelo. Um, Miguel Cotto in Canelo's most recent outing, Miguel Cotto had some real, real moments of success. Uh, very, very interesting fight, quite chess matchy at times. Um, but ultimately, it looked to me that Cotto just couldn't cope with the strength of Canelo, ultimately. He couldn't retaliate as he, as he would like to because he knew that he was going to get hurt. How is Amir Khan going to cope with this, given that OK, I think it's very disrespectful to call him chinny, for want of a better term, but he's been dropped and he's been stopped before. How is he going to cope with someone like Alvarez, who is a big puncher at light middle 
And I think we saw in the Cotto fight, he's a pretty big puncher at middleweight too. Yeah. Well, I mean, in defence of Amir Khan's chin, he's going up in weight, he's looked more solid at welterweight, yeah. you know, more resilient at welterweight than he did at light welter, and much more resilient at light welter than he did at lightweight. So maybe the extra size will help him in that sense. But, you know, with Cotto, he's surely a bigger single puncher than Amir Khan with that massive left hook. And if he wasn't, making Alvarez step back. It was Alvarez, you know, just pushing him back with the weight of his yeah, attacks. Yeah. It's hard to see, it's hard to see Amir Khan pushing yeah. Alvarez back. But what, what Khan has on the flip side is probably faster feet than Cotto. I know Cotto's quite good and clever when he's up moving on his toes, but Amir Khan is very fast. His footwork's very good. Um, and he, he must think, that it's his footwork and ring craft that are going to be the difference against Alvarez. That must be what he sees as his key to victory. Oh, he's not going in with an invincible man. Alvarez lost to Floyd Mayweather in one of the highest grossing fights of all time. And he's had trouble with speed, with slippery types like uh, Erislandi Lara, Austin Trout. But are we asking too much of Khan to expect him to be able to kind of replicate that kind of thing? Because that isn't what Khan's all about. And I've heard it a lot. Oh, Khan can win with his speed. He can be elusive. I mean, no disrespect to Amir Khan, but when has he ever been that elusive in a big fight? Well, you know, with Virgil Hunter, there have been a couple of fights where he has looked a million dollars. Against yeah. Colazzo, he looked fantastic. But Colazzo is a completely different course, level yeah. to Alvarez. But it's, if he can keep his focus and keep his concentration and stay moving throughout the 12 rounds, then he can pose Canelo real problems. It's just, we've seen Amir's character is that he like, you know, he's, he's too brave for his own good. Amir Khan has, whoever is his trainer, whatever the tactics are, in almost every fight he has, there's some point where he feels he has to prove himself. We saw it, for example, against Julio Diaz. Um, and against Alvarez, Alvarez, even though he knows that he's got to stay switched on for 36 minutes, do you really think that Khan can do that? That's the heart of it. I think with this particular fight, maybe there'll be, he'll have less of a sense of there's something he wants to prove. He'll, ha he'll have ingrained, hopefully he'll have ingrained in him, don't go toe to toe, you know, pick, pick a couple of shots, don't get greedy when you're having success and just you know, run for it in an, in an educated way. But I think the problem for Khan is Canelo, he's a really good, aggressive fighter. You know, he got a bit of criticism maybe for the Eris Landy Lara fight, but I thought that was a really good win, yeah, 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 especially yeah. coming yeah. after the Mayweather fight, when Mayweather had really outboxed Canelo, he sort of, you know, stood him on his head at times. And yet to go from that to another real slippery, difficult customer, I think that said a lot about Alvarez. So, Khan might be mentally focused throughout it, but technically Canelo might be able to catch up. I think Canelo probably will be able to catch, catch up with him at certain points. People have likened this to various fights in history, the fact that Khan is making that jump up in weight. And people have kind of mentioned the Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard fight. That was one of several defining moments in Sugar Ray Leonard's career. Khan, you could argue, is yet to have one. Is this all just waiting for him to be, to arrive at last? He, he spent most of his career chasing after Floyd Mayweather, at times cruelly snubbed, then Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's gone now as well. Is this just kind of set up? Is it written in the stars that this is the moment where Amir Khan really, really becomes a worldwide superstar? If he wins, let's make no bones about it, it would be a huge upset of historic proportions. Yes. But if he doesn't win, will it be his defining fight? If he doesn't win, he'll go down as someone who's had a great, exciting career, but maybe his defining moment will be that spectacular Olympic silver medal when he was only 17. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be some occasion, though, this is, isn't it, in Las Vegas, in the Las Vegas arena, brand new, right opposite the MGM Grand. Um, May 7th, which for a long time that has been Floyd Mayweather weekend, hasn't it? Do we expect to see, I do, I think we're going to see Floyd Mayweather all over that fight week making a bit of a nuisance of himself. Yeah, I just think his presence will linger on, even though he's, you know, officially retired. Won't he be interested in the winner of this fight? Because the winner of this fight is going to be one of the biggest names in the sporting world. Might that tempt Mayweather out of retirement? Might it tempt Pacquiao out of retirement? It's a good question. Las Vegas is going to be absolutely buzzing during fight week. You have Mexican fans there, British fans there. 
it's going to be something pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, Canelo has that sort of X factor about him. Yeah. Even when he was over in London for a press conference, it was just, there is an excitement around him. He's only 25. He's just over like middleweight, but he looks very yeah. big, powerful, yeah. muscular guy. He does look kind of the picture of what a world middleweight champion <laughs> should be. Um, it's going to be something else. And I think the fight is going to be exciting. Even if everyone, most people are going to expect a Saul Alvarez knockout victory, I believe Amir Khan can pose him problems. Khan always makes things thrilling, often when he really shouldn't. And that's why Amir Khan's always must watch television. And that's probably what Oscar De La Hoya had in mind when he made this fight. Oscar De La Hoya of Golden Boy Promotions, of course. And this fight was Oscar's brainchild. And we'll hear from Oscar now. This is an international fight. You have the biggest fighter in the UK, the biggest fighter um, in, in Mexico and in the US. You have the biggest venue um, with the uh, with the T-Mobile uh, Arena in Las Vegas. Uh, this is this is uh, this is the uh, this can be the perfect storm um, uh, for boxing. This can be this can be an event that, uh, that that people will be talking about for a very long time. And outside the ring, we're we're creating this 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 huge uh, spectacle. Uh, but let me tell you one thing: inside the ring, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those fights where uh, where you sure you know you don't want to miss. And that was the view from the promoter, Oscar De La Hoya. Now let's hear from the fighters, starting with Saul Canelo Alvarez. Bueno, obviamente, peleadores como él se le dificultan a todos, ¿no? So yeah, Amir is a fighter that um, will give anybody trouble because of his speed, his movement, his long arms, his height. Um, but, um, you know, he, he, he has to prepare himself for that, for that type of fighter. He said there, he has fought many fighters before and he has to prefer all, st all styles out there that there is. Um, and um, he thinks he's a good fighter. This fight just shines between me and Canelo. The media talking about it, everywhere I go, people are asking me questions about it. What made me take this fight? What I'm going to be doing in this fight? How's the training going? The weight, I mean, what makes it so exciting is the weight. Obviously being uh, a 147 pound fighter, moving up to 155, literally going up to weight divisions to take this fight uh, and take this, uh, you know, to, to take and hopefully take the title away from Canelo really and this is something that you know, can make history and that's what I'm, I'm here to do, you know, I want to make history like I did in 2004 in the Olympics. I know I can do that where everybody didn't expect me to win a medal, you know, to go to the Olympics and get beat. I was a young boy fighting against men. Now, I'm here, 29 years old, you know, up against Saul Alvarez Canelo, you know, who's supposed to be a very dangerous opponent. He's a world champion at middleweight. I'm going up to his weight. I'm going in the lion's den. I'm going to his backyard and I'm going to beat him there. Just like I did in the Olympic Games. And this is definitely, this has definitely made people think, wait a minute, he did it before. I'm sure he can do it again. So that was Amir Khan explaining exactly what the Olympics did for him. We're delighted to be joined here by Joshua Buatzi who at the weekend qualified for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, Matt. How does it feel? On top of the world, man. It's finally sinking in that I'm one step away from the Olympic dream and everything that we've been working for up in Sheffield. So um, now I'm buzzing. You're part of Team GB, which is up in Sheffield, but this, this gym, South Norwood and Victory, is where it all started for you. Yeah. Um, what, what got you into boxing in the first place? Um, like my mate bought a set of gloves to our old estate where we all tried it on and um, he got the better of all of us. He wasn't the biggest, so I said to him, do you know what, give me six weeks, I'm going to learn whatever it is and then I'm going to come back for you. And hopefully you can meet him <laughs> one day and he'll tell you I got him back after six weeks time. But, um, you know, I found this gym just by chance and um, I've been here since I was 15. I'm 23 now, so I've been here for about seven, eight years and it's just been the best decision I've made. Did you ever dream when you walked into this gym, when you were just starting out, that one day you'd be representing nah, no Britain chance. at the Olympics? No chance, you know. I didn't even think I'd win the junior ABAs, then I won that, did the senior ABAs, got into the GB team, and then a year and a half later, I'm here going to the Olympic Games. So it's, it's literally, I thought about it, you know, didn't ever think it would happen. John, you followed his career quite closely. Uh, how, how much of a surprise was it for you that how, how quickly this all happened? 
it did happen really quickly because it's only a couple of years ago Josh was boxing for, for South Northern Victory in the ABAs. He won that. That got him onto the GV squad. Um, he showed potential. He looked tough. He had a style like a pro. But to go through all the way to beating the top, the top internationals, that's, that's hard. And he did it really quickly. So um, it's quite a surprise. But having seen him you know, against against the top guys out there. I mean, he dropped Julio La Cruz in the World Championships last year, and La Cruz is the Cuban, who is you know, probably one of the best pound-for-pound -pound amateurs in the world. So that just shows that you know, Boazzi potentially has what it takes at, at Rio. It's going, to be, it's going to be a pretty gruelling time out there in Rio. Um, what, what, what's the plans now? What happens between now and Rio? Um, we just have a few training camps in different countries and maybe a tournament or maybe a fight and then we're good to go. But I'm enjoying my week off because I know once I, get back, <laughs> once I get back to Sheffield, we're going to get beasted every single day. So I'm just enjoying my time off, let the body heal and recover and then we're back on it. So what are you, are you visualising a gold medal now? Yeah, you know, like John said, I've boxed the best kids in the world and in Europe and I've beaten them as well. So um, I'm going there in full confidence and, you know, hoping that when it's my time to fight, I show up on the night and I get the win. We mentioned Amir Khan earlier. You know, he was 17 years old. He got the silver medal in 2004. Yeah. And look what it's led to. He's going on, he's fighting in, this, in what is probably going to be the biggest fight of the year in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Um, is Amir Khan an inspiration to you in what he's gone on to achieve after his, after his amateur success? I mean, winning an, an Olympic medal at 17 is amazing. I'm 23 and I haven't done it yet, but he did it at 17. That alone is inspirational, but you see where boxing at that level has taken him as a professional and yeah. what he's doing now, one of the biggest fights potentially this year, like you said. So it's good to see Amir Khan, you know, in the big fights and he's, he was also in a GB setup that I'm in now. Yeah. So for myself, it's given me an idea of where I will be in the next few years. And can Amir Khan beat Saul Canelo Alvarez? That's the big question mark. But well, what, I, what, what I will say, <laughs> what I will say is that if each fighter fights to their strength, we're in for a treat. You know, Canelo needs to fight to his strengths with the power that he's got, and Amir Khan using that speed. If he doesn't get tagged, he, he's gonna win it. But again, Canelo's got 12 rounds to try and hurt him. So um, it's about who executes the game plan perfectly on that night. You're sitting on the fence a little bit there. Yeah, I'm always, <laughs> my friends, I'm always sitting on the fence when it comes to stuff like this. But um, I wish him the best and the best man will win. OK, so who, if, if you had to... <laughs> He's taking me off the fence now. Yeah, okay, come on, um, get off the fence. If, if you I had to, to, yeah. Who, go who's going to do it? Your life, your life depends <laughs> on one of them winning. Who are you going to pick? So let's start in this order. You say John, and then I'll go, and then Matt goes. So you can go first. Who you think? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Canelo Alvarez by knockout, unfortunately for Amir. Wow. That's I'll, just my guess, though. I'll say Amir Khan on points, or Canelo Alvarez by knockout. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no ors. <laughs> Can't tell my head who would win. Um, I'm going to go Amir Khan as well. Uh, like yeah, that. yeah that's Amir it. Khan. What about you? I think, well, it's funny. My first instinct was Canelo. Then you speak to Amir Khan and he's so confident, yeah. like more so than I've ever heard him, more switched on than I've ever heard him. But ultimately, I think if you take the emotion out of it and look at everything, I just think Canelo at some point is going to catch up with him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I don't know, around six or seven rounds. Well, wow, something like that. It. Yeah. He's moved up a weight as well, a few yeah, weights. Yeah. That might benefit him. That's the, that's the other thing. It might benefit him, it might not. Yeah. Canelo might be too big, too strong. What exactly has Khan got to do to win this? Stay out of, just stay out of Canelo's weight, don't get hit. He's going to get hit, but I mean, not taking clean shots, you know, using the speed and keeping that distance between himself and Canelo, because I'm sure he's probably got the longer yeah. arms as well. What about Canelo? What are his, what, what, what's the key to victory for Canelo? Make that ring as small as possible for Khan make it uncomfortable and hit him everywhere. Josh, thank you so much for coming in today and joining us and talking to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank and you. I wish you all the very, very best in Rio 2016. And I think everyone at home will also share that good look and be keeping an eye on him very closely. OK, so you've got our predictions. Just to reiterate, I'm going to go for 
Canelo probably round six or seven, maybe a bright start from Khan, but I think at some point, and probably in those middle rounds, he's going to get caught and he's going to get stopped. John? I see Khan being brave, probably too brave for his own good, and I'm going to agree with you. I think Canelo can win by knockout, maybe in the eighth round after an exciting fight. But what do we know? We'd love to get your views on the contest, so please tweet us at BoxingNewZ or follow us on Facebook. And we're going to be out in Las Vegas for fight week. So visit our website, www.boxynewsonline.net, for all the latest before, during and after the fight. And don't forget about our weekly issue where we go really in-depth with features, with interviews. There's going to be behind-the-scenes access. That is available every Thursday from the newsstand or available digitally via Pocket Mags. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.